I can proudly state that my school, uh, Orchids, the international school, Malad, uh, Malad West is future ready school. So when I say future ready school, what we do is along with the excellence in academics, the school caters to the holistic development of the child. Now, this is not only the typical terminology which we are using in holistic development, but we ensure that holistic development is done by various activities. Here, we present to you a significant program, the talk show with principals. This is a highly informative activity in the context of National Education Policy 2020. The education system in India is reimagined and a big educational overall is in the process. We have already started working towards attainment of this goal. Leadership take this policy to the classrooms and to the students. Here is a platform for sharing and collaboration among the schools across India for the realization of this policy which envisions to make India a global knowledge superpower. The principles belonging to varied background express their views and experience. There couldn't be a better repository of knowledge for educational organizations. Ek Bharat Sreshth Bharat Vidyadan presents the talk show with principals. Greetings to all the viewers who are viewing the talk show with principals. Vidyadan, as we all know, is committed to the cause of education. We have been diversifying our activities and have been covering a vast arena of platform and activities, right from teaching art and craft, to curriculum transaction, to capacity building program. And also even now recently we had upskilling with tool AI and artificial intelligence. So here we show what Vidyadan intends to do through our video. A nation is advanced in proportion to education and intelligence spread among the masses. Words of Swami Vivekananda. Vidya, according to the Indian philosophy, refers to correct knowledge, the ability to comprehend, reason, and apply the acquired knowledge makes an individual to live the life he aspires. Knowledge eliminates mind. Knowledge liberates. Knowledge empowers. Knowledge erases ignorance. Knowledge paves the path towards righteousness. In the words of Savitra Bhai Phule, knowledge is like fire, which must first be kindled by someone, but will afterwards propagate itself. Vidyadhan Foundation is a non-profit organization working towards empowerment of underprivileged children, youth and women through education. Vidyadhan Foundation is committed to provide quality education in India and is helping the disadvantaged children realize their full potential and working to inspire the young generation to work for the development of rural students. Also, Vidyadhan through multifarious activities is reaching out to thousands of students across the country to provide quality education through skill development. Aligned with NAP 2020, Vidya then reaches out to the educators across the country through skill enhancement program encompassing noble teaching methodologies. Vidya then has been able to enkindle the minds of students and teachers from colleges and schools through various webinars, panel discussions like education pay charcha, so on and forth. Storytelling pedagogical series have been well accepted by the tiny thoughts which is mainly intended to nurture creativity and critical thinking. Vidyadan works with a strong conviction that the different form of art enriches the curriculum and has been imparting knowledge about the rich cultural heritage of India. The positive responses and cooperation from the community 
motivates Vidya Da for serving more devoutly, for deepening the spread of education. Vidya Da expresses heartfelt gratitude to all the well-wishers, benefactors and volunteers in supporting the endeavor for the accomplishment of the mission. Together, we can illuminate our country with diyas of knowledge and happiness in all homes of India. Let no Indian citizen be deprived of quality education. Let me quote Swami Vivekananda, Arise, awake and stop not till the goal is reached. Vidyadan invites each one of you to partner with the realization of his vision. Empower underprivileged children, youth and women through education to bring a sustainable change in their lives. Ensure quality education in India and work to help the disadvantaged. Inspire the young generation to work for the development of rural students. Jai Hind. It is an honor to have the principal of Orchids International School, Ms. Jai Shri Bhagi. Welcome to you, ma'am. I would now briefly introduce what the school is and what are the activities taken up and why our principal today present here as our guest for Vidyadha is very special and dear to us. This is a talk show with the principals to understand what are the educational good practices that we can share among the schools in the country. And we as a country, India, we can proceed forward by sharing our knowledge and collaborating. So Heart Vidya Dhan extends a hearty welcome to Ms. Jai Shri. It's my proud privilege to introduce Madam to the viewers of this particular program. She has high proficiency in teamwork, which is quite evident from the way the school is functioning and motivates every member of the team to bring forth the best without with her leadership qualities. Any activity which is being undertaken is taken so seriously that the outcome of those activities is just amazing, which you would be understanding as we proceed through the course of time. Madam is having three post-graduation degrees, which itself shows the variety of skills that she possesses in English literature, in education, and Bandhanatyam. So right now, it's a time we are talking about integrating the subjects with art. So I think there couldn't be a better person for us to share her experience other than the principal, Ms. Jayashri. Now look at this. She is the winner of various awards. And just have a look at what award she has uh, received. And we are talking about innovation in education. Ma'am is the recipient of Super Nachiketa Award for innovative ideas in education. And so here we are just wait and watch. We are going to have great novel ideas being shared with. Again, she has received it, received the same award for innovation in education, and also has presented various papers research papers in education. Now to just give you a brief about what the school does. Here you see, we are talking about experiential learning, competency-based uh, education. And here the, you can see how lovely the children are playing with the mathematic kids. Learning even without your knowledge, the intricacies of mathematics. And we know Max is not a subject which everybody loves to do or loves to learn. And this is just one way of uh, doing it. So this really fascinated me, ma'am. And here you go. We are talking about 21st century uh, skills. And there you can see the children in acting. It seems to be like a theater work uh, that's going on. And not even one child is left out. Everybody has got some role to play. And so here we talk about 100% student engagement because this is something which is debated among the uh, teachers, how we can bring in student engagement. So it just congrats to you, ma'am, for trying out these kind of uh, activities. And here, uh, the serious uh, students having some kind of a panel discussion, and you should look at the age of the students who was 
who are totally involved uh, into the uh, discussions. So here comes the communication part of it, the collaboration part of it. So this itself tells the principal is doing a wonderful uh, teamwork. So with this note, we go into our informal kind of a conversation to understand how we can bring in the innovative pedagogical approaches in our education system. Thank you for being kind enough to spare your valuable time with us, madam. And Thank hearty you. welcome once again to you. Thank you so much, ma'am. Before we uh, begin, it would be interesting to know uh, through the uh, video clipping what the school does. Uh, I'm sure that you'll all feel uh, like love to have madam over here and would be excited uh, to hear from ma'am what she is going to tell and you're all going to be uh, eagerly waiting for it. So I would like to share that uh, video with you. Dear viewers, you have seen how active and happy the school is. The school itself has a vibrancy with a lot of color. And so is the principal here is. So, Madam, can we get into our sharing of experiences? With Absolutely, ma'am. Absolutely. Thank you so much for that introduction, ma'am. It was very kind for you, uh, for using such lovely words for me and my school. God bless you. Thank you so much, ma'am. We had seen in the video a lot of practices, a lot of colorfulness in the school premises and the campus, even in the activities. So could you please share with us some good practices that you are following so that the audience who is viewing it can also incorporate it into our school curriculum? Thank you for the question, ma'am. But before that, I would like to uh, appreciate Vidya Dan for the beautiful work that they are doing on the in the field of education be it students be it teachers uh, all cater of uh, educators have been catered for and the best part is they have uh, ensured that there is no student who is left untouched by the impact of quality education so kudos to vidya dan and i feel it is vidya dan which has been given as dan and therefore it is vidya dan so it's beautiful amalgamation of uh, education. And this is what you actually have to give back to the society. So kudos to team Vidya Dan. And uh, God bless you all. And may, may you get more opportunities of this sort where you uh, get a platform to do beautiful things for the society. So thank you uh, for making me a part of Vidya Dan. And uh, towards your question, ma'am, uh, as you could see in the nutshell, uh, I can proudly state that my school, uh, Orchids, the international school, Malad, uh, Malad West is future ready school. 
So when I say future ready school, what we do is along with the excellence in academics, the school caters to the holistic development of the child. Now, this is not only the typical terminology which we are using in holistic development, but we ensure that holistic development is done by various activities. Small, small things are being catered to. So uh, the walls of uh, Orchid speak, we have speaking walls. So when your child moves around, he or she would find things where he can learn and actually do a hands-on with it. Uh, where students are prepared for employability skills through establishing workshops like carpentry, horticulture, and all those things. These are things which we talk about in CBE. Uh, communication skills are developed uh, through platforms like blog writing and discussion forum. What you saw in the uh, snapshot is uh, the three third standard children doing discussion forum. So there are topics being given to them and they discuss onto it. So the communication skill is being developed through that. Uh, blog writing is being done from grade three onwards by the students. Orchidio, Orchidio is um, a radio of orchids. So the students actually present a radio talk show like you and me, we are doing as of now, we have uh, television shows of orchids. Uh, entrepreneurship uh, skill, problem solving, critical thinking, etc., are nurtured through activities like Shark Tank. We have a mini Shark Tank in the school. We have an ad mad world in the school. So, you know, there are uh, lots of such uh, activities which are fun, but the child is learning these uh, problem solving, critical thinking without knowing it as terminology. And hence, I state very firmly that we are future ready schools. Exactly. So that's great to hear, ma'am, because we are now, uh, I think the schools across the country are talking about the implementation of new education policy, where we have to move from road memorization to real life uh, situations. So yes. when you say that we have already started blogging and uh, radio and all those things, we have started uh, at a very uh, early stages itself. So as you rightly said, uh, it's just amazing to hear uh, that you are future ready school or rather you have already started implementing MEP uh, 2020. So is there any additional feature that you would like to uh, add upon with respect to the document which has come? Because you seem to be doing it. Uh, is there anything additional that you have started off after the document came in? Thank you again. This is a very uh, hot topic called NEP. So there are <laughs> lots of people who have lots of apprehensions about NEP, what it is going to be and all those. Uh, by God's grace, um, I was blessed to be a part of the uh, framework of national education policy when I was a part of Nagpur Sahodaya Schools Complex, Nagpur. Uh, I was an office bearer and I was at the part of the 14 member committee and we had um, good contribution in these uh, in the framework of national education policy. What exactly happens is uh, we have workshop and discussion forums and uh, you know advertisement designing and all those to just ensure that there is a plethora available for the child. It is no more that the child is going to only focus in for engineering and for medicine. We are catering and preparing the child for a huge vista which is available for him or her in the future. So yes, uh, NEP is going to bring in lots of changes and we are trying to you know, work out on these uh, documentation which has come up. Yes, uh, that is uh, great, ma'am. Although I think all the schools may not find it uh, as comfortable as uh, uh, we are feeling because definitely the economic uh, backgrounds, the facilities and all that would matter. So probably, uh, ma'am, could you please uh, share like how within the limited resources of infrastructure, how we can bring in this competency-based uh, education without uh, much of an investment or without uh, much of a, you know, the financial liabilities on the school so that middle schools, this, uh, the middle strata of schools can also incorporate this kind of a holistic uh, development. Uh, Ma'am, this is a very genuine question where uh, I agree on what you stated is not everybody, it becomes possible for them to uh, you know, have a competency-based uh, education because there is an infrastructural limitation. Uh, thankfully, because of the COVID, I think what based, uh, happened during the pandemic was that we shifted to the digital world. 
we are now technically sound people earlier teachers uh, sorry to state were not that technically sound so we can use this particular base like i stated about things like shark tanks or about uh, blog writing and all you do not require much of an infrastructure for this True, but true. similarly you can on the same line uh, implement those things it's just to ensure that the teachers are trained well the instructions are being put across well to the children they know what is expected from there and and small small activities can be put across for example when i stated that the walls of orchid speak uh, can't i use a chart paper and make a sudoku and put across and the child walks across and do the sudoku on the wall doing a sudoku mm -hmm. in the newspaper so you're doing the sudoku on a chart paper and on the wall there is a lot of difference i do not have to invest too much onto the infrastructure here yes my school does uh, have an a good infra where it gives me those platform where i can actually prepare a sudoku uh, using the ply and magnet and this and that but if that costs me more i can actually use a chart paper and do it it is the creativity of each teacher which has to be nurtured and uh, without a, a very big infra you can actually work on uh, the implementation of uh, the nep and its creative potential yes i think this would be a great uh, knowledge sharing for all those who are doing because we always uh, you know think we need big money uh, to bring in the implementation of uh, nep 2020 so i think even any schools and any sector can definitely go through yes ma as ma'am said sudoku we don't need the sophisticated kind of a thing we can just use a chart paper and uh, walls and all that and even blogging what we said is exactly true there is a digital tools just comes free of open source uh, softwares are available and definitely we can tap that of course it depends upon the potential of the teachers the creativity of the teachers and i think our students are more creative than the teachers they would even partake if we provide them a a platform for them so i think it could be a teacher student together they can bring in a kind of a holistic uh, development but there are so many things available which can be explored like i stated that you know you need not have a carpentry or something been uh, learned in the school yes of course you require a workshop to actually practice it but these videos these uh, you know teaching methodologies can be shared if in my previous it was i called for a potter in the school calling a potter in the school will not cost me more true they'll right? be happy so to come i did pottery and my children uh, did pottery along with them so that was a skill which the child has learned we Very took them to, uh, on a field trip to a farm and making them understand what is agriculture all about what is irrigation all about what is drip irrigation so they this is not going to take you much of the uh, infra but yes the child will get an experiential learning will note down what are the different so when we are teaching irrigation uh, in the textbook and taking them to a farm and showing them how the drip irrigation has been done or call a farmer parent and ask them to speak about it to them we are using optimizing our resources true very true ma'am yes i think that's a beautiful answer to those who say that you know the fun courses like carpentry gardening etc cannot be implemented in the schools because they may be constraints of space they may not be uh, as you said ma'am the infrastructure uh, resources which is uh, required a work station may not be there but still i think uh, as you said pottery a day or uh, in a week or a month they can definitely outsource the people and then can get technicated Uh, with it yes that is a lovely answer and uh, ma'am how is this competency based education model going to transform this indian education system because everybody is looking forward what's going to happen in the education sector or what magic is going to come out of it so <laughs> what do you expect is going to happen within uh, say maybe 5 to 10 years or so it is going in to bring in a revolution ma'am it is going to bridge the gap between the school education and the career ahead so uh, the child who is in the cocoon as of now too much protected with and not getting an exposure would surely get more exposure and would able to connect to the society and the needs of the society uh, the origin of this concept of uh, you know uh, cbe what we talk about competency based uh, education evolved out of a several years of research in the mind brain sciences learning theories and research on the youth development so there are four key principles which uh, emphasizing on the
I would rather go one step ahead and say it is learning centered approach, wherein the teacher and the child learns. You correctly stated, madam, that at times the child is much more smarter and creative than the teacher. So now it is not the teacher who is teaching; it is the learning which is happening between the teacher and the um, student. So more it is uh, of a learning centered approach. The principles which I, I feel is that let us understand that learning is personalized. it is competency based it has to equip you for the future uh, it takes a place any time anywhere and everybody has his or her own pace and every student should have the ownership of uh, their own learning they should have the ownership uh, the onus over their learning teachers is uh, teacher is no more a sage on the stage you must have heard this umpteen number of times but teacher becomes uh, you know a facilitator to enable this transfer of knowledge and skill um, and the guiding depositions by creating a positive mindset and encouraging the habit of learning these key principles when guided by a coherent and rigorous set of educational goals lead to a deeper level of uh, learning with the uh, necessary outcomes which it, which is there to prepare the student for every college or career and the civic life i also feel that you know the indian school boards have been uh, progressively adopting uh, cbe thankfully the cbse has been training the teachers accordingly uh, being from the cbse i can talk about cbse so yes we have been getting cbse uh, the cbe uh, training to improve the quality of education so what is unique about cbe is that it focuses on what the student learns and not on the time what has been spent in the classroom to get the credits uh, one of the key benefits of uh, the uh, you know competency based education is that learning is focused on the real life connects the real world skills and competency development so programs are designed around the competency that are needed for the career ensuring that the structural uh, instructional material is relevant the outcome is that the students are workplace ready and have an expertise to choose their own field so there there is a platter in front of them a huge huge uh, buffet and they can pick and choose what they want to so we confront a crisis regarding employability skills in india when we have people who are graduated with an engineering degree but they are just be they are not an engineer there is a there's a subtle difference between it i have an be degree and i do not have the skill of being an engineer while i have a polytechnic done person who would be much more smarter and you know efficient than that uh, of the person who is holding a be degree so this uh, uh, gap has to be bridged so cbe will be, uh, cbe will help us get skillful professionals and entrepreneurs cbc actually envisions that every learner should have achieved uh, certain goals by the end of the course so you know when we have critical thinking and problem solving imagination and creativity communication and collaboration skills so all these things would happen with the uh, cbe and the project based learning so i feel yes it would bring in a revolution in indian education system it will actually make every school a future ready school and every child connect to the real life world yes ma'am that is right this competency based education if you look at vedic education system uh, was uh, somewhat like a competency based uh, model itself Agreed. Agreed. so earlier then we thrown we moved on to this examination based kind of a uh, situation where then uh, we were training them to write exams a lot and so definitely the, the children lost the interest also in studying at times and somehow they managed to get through these engineering and uh, medical colleges which was never their passion as uh, ma'am said yes this competency based model definitely would cater to each learner and i think the constructivist the constructivist approach of education would be uh, adopted so uh, having said this ma'am uh, what are the challenges uh, that the schools would face uh, in this implementation of competency uh, based model according to your view one we had already discussed about infrastructure that you stated and yes ma'am exactly of course every uh, new concept which comes in would have certain teething issues and this i think can be uh, taken up just as a challenge and not that we cannot find a solution for it all these are uh, the problems which can have solution 
so what i'm listing down is certain uh, things which i felt um, achieving excellence uh, can be one of the uh, you know challenge which comes in where uh, a competency based curriculum requires educational institutions to demonstrate an uncompromising commitment towards excellence so some of the uh, key concerns uh, that we face is how to ensure that the rigor and the quality of curriculum based program remains equitable across all boards because we have state board icsc cbsc ig every boards coming in so there should be an equitability to it then how will curriculum realize this goal of achieving excellence uh, how will the competency based program break the path of mediocrity and move beyond the fate of other general educational trends so having said that the other point which raises in my mind is the large class sizes yes, the population yes. explosion which is happening in india keeping that in mind if we work there are huge classes uh, in some like the cbsc has restricted it to say 40 45 but there are other boards where in 60 65 80 is a common norm how do we tailor make things for these children you know this greatly hinders implementation of cbe curriculum and restrict educators from applying learner centric interactive teaching methods very true very true. you know the solution for this can be limitation of the class sizes which would be easy for the student and the educator leading to improved performances of learners as instructors would be able to assist students and make it tailor make uh, according to the learning difficulties that they have been confronting infrastructure yes we discussed upon this uh, and we also came up like you know infrastructure it cannot be just a restriction so since uh, like i stated that we need to be future ready and uh, have things like carpentry and pottery uh, horticulture and greenhouse and all those things for the children um, but we can at least start on with smart boards because this is now become a very common thing we can if we cannot give them a real line at least we can show them the videos and get connected Uh, i also had implemented certain uh, things called uh, anubhuti in my previous school i have discussed about this at vidya dhan earlier too uh, anubhuti was a program where the child uh, from grade 8 to 10 uh, we had a two day visit of these children to various career forums so on the day one they were actually trained and and talked uh, there was a talk between the counselors and uh, the students uh, along with the teachers and we used to take these children to various visits visit to niri visit to a hospital visit to um, a hotel visit to a press uh, and all these places so i cannot bring the press to my school i'll take my children to the press very nice yes exactly you know how how we can bring a solution to this so in order to implement a competency based curriculum educational institutions require everything from modern classrooms creative centers smart boards laboratories and all these but then if we are not able to get this in the rural areas what do we do is we take the children there so uh, it cannot be that every time the well will come to the thirsty person we have to go towards that towards it so, yes yes uh, then there's another issue which i feel can be a challenge is assessment standardization yes so you know uh, when we are implementing uh, cbe curriculum in higher education in standardizing the mechanism in which competencies or skills are assessed and this is because being a personalized learning approach cb focuses largely on the subject mastery irrespective of the time place pathway completion and all those things so you know how to measure each student for every performance outcome how to identify opportunities uh, for learners to demonstrate individualized uh, subject mastery without adhering to a standardized performance outcome this is going to be a challenge in who determines these student learning outcomes and should they vary from institution to institution or from board to board that again remains a challenge um, this i think can be sorted out the other problem which i was thinking around was uh, the board recognition and understanding cbe is a uh, a new concept what do you feel in the uh, indian uh, education fraternity as of now so uh, students graduating through this method of learning are sometimes greeted with skeptical employers who aren't aware about the model so we need to give this sort of uh, you know the concept to the uh, people who are recruiting to 
so i feel like i had been associated with an institution which had engineering colleges which had uh, other graduation level colleges so where there's a campus interview we need to talk to these people about how these children are developed and what are the potential hidden in them so many employers in the job market are very rigid about hiring students passing from a traditional educational program and who attend certain grade like i said they want be degree उट recommending for a time frame but march three of skills definitely it is a challenge as you rightly said we cannot let a child be in grade 9 or grade 10 for 2 two, two years and just you know learn at this zero no, or not at your own your own pace they will be yelling with us and exactly. like i said that the faculty also should be uh, you know updated so identifying the competency needed based on the specific job profile performance expectation measurement so now the teacher is not going to talk only about her academic she is also to be ready as a career coach the school becomes a career lab for them so to systematically overcome these challenges institutions need to be primarily focused on faculty capacity building to help them get familiarized with the changing uh, learning centered programs so we can use this uh, you can we can achieve this through various faculty development programs uh, like what vidya dhan is also doing it is again one of the modes through which you can tell the teachers what we are doing as of now is we are equipping the teachers about it and which facilitates them to learn on the job skills required uh, for this innovative practical uh, innovative educational programs to be implemented yes ma'am exactly we have now uh, capacity building programs uh, even vidya dhan is taking it up especially the cbsc we need to take a uh, really compliment the initiative of uh, cbsc and they are bringing out a lot of handbooks yes now it is for us to decide how we take up these capacity building programs how we groom uh, ourselves how we learn as we said i think we should have that meta cognitive skills lifelong uh, learning uh, skills as you said we need to upgrade the teachers so that they can uh, i of course it is a challenge but then we can define our learning pathways we can share our different kind of learning pathway uh, of course all challenges we have to overcome yes ma'am that is uh, exactly right now could you share us uh, some pedagogical approaches that innovative way that we can do the classroom transactions for this competency based model as well as 21st century skills um basically the education system of the 21st century uh, has changed very radically with the integration of uh, technology in every sector and like i said thanks to the pandemic <laughs> all teachers have become uh, techno savvy let me put it that way at the same time the students are more matured than the previous time for changing the globalizing world the role of the teacher is essential to improve the sustainable education at the same time inspiring and guiding the student in increasing employability skills with the digital tools is a prerequisite for the teacher uh, that is a teacher in the 21st century will be a digital teacher uh the teacher is not just uh, you know a facilitator for learning of the students only now they are responsible for training the students like i stated earlier she has to be a career lab coach in identifying the uh, students interest uh, aptitude attitude and should be able to become a good guide uh on the uh, employability skill expanding their mind growing digital citizenship critical thinking creativity so the teacher cannot say i do not know ha huh? the career thing is something which other teachers going to tell you or some other counselor will tell you no as of now if my teacher is a maths teacher and a child comes and tells me ma'am what if i take mathematics uh, in my graduation what are the career options available for me do you think it's good is it is there my potential to go in for it yes my teacher should be ready for it and uh, uh, a planner of the 21st century careers should be ready so like i stated my teacher should be a career mentor she should be a resource provider he or she should be a resource provider uh, digital instruction should be there in different ways of learning because there are different learners and we are catering to different learners 
and learning facilitating uh, facilitation has to be there yes ma'am so actually here now the responsibility lies on to the teachers as as well because they are the people who are going to uh, take the curriculum to the or the competency based model to the uh, classrooms yes so we have a lot of responsibility as uh, teachers we need to maintain a growth uh, mindset and probably our attitude itself towards the teaching profession has to change i think they are changing the as per nep the teacher curriculum is also changing uh, but then in our schools we may be having the teachers who have not done that kind of a training. Uh, so I think that has been substituted with the capacity building programs. And definitely uh, with, yes, it, it would be a collaborative uh, work with the you know, teachers, students, the stakeholders. All stakeholders will have to be a part of this uh, to implement the competency-based education model. How do you assess, yes, as a leader? Uh, as a leader, uh, how do you think that you would be taking up this competency-based education model in your schools? How do we bring the growth mindset of the teachers? How do we motivate them for the, the same as a leadership? <laughs> Thank you. The first and foremost, what we can do is uh, make them understand uh, what they have done in their B.Eds. B.Ed is a course which they have done uh, when they come to the school. They have learned what is action plan. Do they implement action plan? Revisiting those B.A. curriculum, revamping the education qualification, like in the sense, the degree of B.A. and D.A. should have the curriculum which will link the school children, uh, which can be implemented by, uh, on the school students. So this is something which we had proposed when, uh, during the framework. Uh, principal leaders are facilitators within the school and can be an important element in spreading and strengthening school reforms and improvement. So planning, training, implementation of CBE with proper goal setting would be the key. So you need to actually know what is, why are you working and what we are working. A small, right? Do our teachers know our mission statement? And they have a touchstone. Optimizing the resources and connecting them to the school. So these are smaller, smaller things which I can, uh, as a leader, do. And we are uh, taking up those steps uh, where the parents come in, where the grandparents come in, and uh, their resources are being optimized. They are they interact. They feel connected, and uh, their experiences. So when we when I have to visit and have a peep in the life of a CA. Uh, CA does not have a lab or something where the child can go and see. But if a CA comes and has a talk show and tells how it is, how uh, you're supposed to do the uh, entrance of the CA, uh, what is it course time, what is your benefit, what are your career prospects, it would be much more effective. And the best part is that parent feels connected yes. to the school. So yes, thank you for that answer. That is optimum utilization of resources uh, rather than complaining that we have a lot of challenges uh, ahead. We take Absolutely. this... Uh, model uh, ahead. Absolutely. Yes, ma'am. Thank you so much uh, for being uh, part of this show. I think you have shared a lot of practical experiences. So when we, rather than a bookish kind of an information that we can derive uh, from Googling or from books, this is a practical life experiences that you have shared. And so therefore, definitely it would be easier for us to take it to the classrooms. Yes. So I'm very sure that those who are viewing this definitely have we are attained a lot of words of wisdom from madam so i think we had enough a uh, long uh, conversation so thank you so much uh, so it is time to say a big thank you uh, to you for sharing these words of practical uh, experiences we have covered a whole lot of uh, points right from how as a leader we could take it ahead what are the challenges uh, that we are going to face or how this capacity building program uh, would be required even if you don't have infrastructure resources how we can implement a competency-based education model of course we understand that there are difficulties there are constraints but then it is again the attitude that we carry further would be able to take this model ahead and make our India into a self-reliant uh, country. A lot of innovation happening, a lot of creativity happening. So at this outset, uh, I think uh, I should say compliment the words of wisdom that has come from ma'am. And definitely let us take our country ahead. No wonder the school is doing great uh, and the school has got already future ready 
a future ready, the school is future ready already in the context of the way you are thinking. Definitely the leadership plays a great uh, role. So we wish Madam and the school the very best. Thank, Thank you so much once again from uh, Vidyadhan. It would be great to share, or, although ma'am had given a testimonial in the beginning, uh, you could give us a few words of advice, how we can go ahead uh, with these kind of uh, activities and how we can serve the society so that sustainable development goal, quality education is not deprived to anybody. Great. I do agree, ma'am. Vidya Dan is uh, doing a wonderful work. And people like you being associated uh, with Vidya Dan again empowers it. Uh, I have I have been a part of Vidya Dan. This is the third session which I'm doing, uh, and I have been listening to these um, programs of Vidya Dan. I have been seeing these programs of Vidya Dan which they have been doing for uh, not only the teachers uh, but also for the underprivileged students. This is the best thing. When I, when I saw the video, also it states that ensure that quality education reaches out to every individual child. Nobody is deprived out of it. And the beautiful part that you stated is to create a happy child. So, uh, you know, I appreciate the efforts of Vidya Dan to uh, have a happy individual, a happy citizen of India. Because if I am um, educated, I'm not saying only literate, I'm talking about education. So Vidya Dhan is taking uh, that initiative towards education, not just literacy. And that is what which makes it a bit different, a bit unique. Uh, and I appreciate and congratulate Vidya Dhan and team and ma'am, you, everyone for that matter. Uh, this is a beautiful task that you are giving back to the society, you know, what the society has given to you in a larger, larger perspective. I would love to be uh, connected with Vidya Dhan in future too. And uh, I wish them uh, luck for whatever they have been in, uh, doing. Every time when I interact with sir, it's like, you know, ma'am, I've started with this too. I've started with that too. There's so many things in his pocket and uh, what all is going on in his mind, I really appreciate uh, team Vidya Dan for uh, all the efforts that you have been putting. God bless you all. And thank you so very much, ma'am, for the wonderful interaction. Thank you so much, ma'am. These words inspires us, motivates us, and give us the energy to go further forward. With this, the talk show with the principal, Ms. Jayashree, the principal of Orchid International School, ends here. And we sign out with the commitment and with the firm decision that we are going to take this ahead in whatever way we can to provide quality education to each and every student of our great nation. Jai Hind. Thank you. Jai, Jai Hind. Thank you. Thank you.